Hello Navigator. In this video, we are going to talk about the AIS, that is Automatic Identification System. This is a very important equipment to assist in safe navigation. I will try to cover all you have to know about the AIS. AIS is basically assisting in navigation. Question is how does it assist in navigation? Yes, it does assist in navigation by providing datas. Basically, datas are two-way sharing here. One is you can see other vessels data from your vessel and other one is your vessels data is showing to other vessels. So the thing is, if you have AIS installed and you are using AIS on board, then you can see other vessels data. There are basically two types of datas. One is static data. The other one is dynamic data. Now we will see what are the static datas we see in AIS. Static datas are those datas which are fixed, okay, like length of the ship, breadth of the ship, antenna position. These are the static data. Once the AIS is installed, these data are updated at the same time. Length, breadth, antenna position, like these data. So these data will never change. There are other type of data which is dynamic data. And dynamic data, there are two types. One is voice data and another one is other navigational data like CPA, TCPA, then speed, force. These are like CPA that is closest point of approach, TCPA time of closest point of approach, speed of the ship, course over ground, bearing, range. Okay, you can say other navigational data. So what is voice data then? Voice data are like destination of the ship, number of crews on board, estimated time of arrival, that is ETA. These type of data are, you can consider as voice data. However, in many books, you will find that AIS data are three types. One is static data, another one is dynamic data, the other one is voice data. And these data are continuously changing with respect to each other. Let's say your vessel is this one. You have AIS, that is A. And there is another vessel that also having AIS and that is AIS B. So AIS A and AIS B, they will exchange information. From here, we can see these vessels data. And from here, we can see these vessels data. Now we will talk about how does AIS work. That means how one vessel can see other vessels data. The interesting part here to understand that when your vessel can see other vessels data, at the same time, other vessels can see your vessels data. So this is interesting, of course, and we have to understand how this exchange of information is uh, happening at the same time. This works on a funder that is called SO. TDMA. SOTDMA. That means self organizing time division multiple access. This SOTDMA is a simple funder. To make it easy, I can draw a circular line like this one. Okay, now let's say your vessel is at the middle and there is another vessel here and there is another vessel also here. So there are three vessels. Your vessel is this one. This is vessel A. This is vessel B. Okay. So these three vessels, all of you have AIS. The AIS software has a time division sensing. Let's say this is the total time. Just for instance, we make it uh, a box like this to understand it easily. So three vessels means three division. These three divisions are exactly uh similar in size it means they have exactly same slot of time what it does is it is sending at the same time it is receiving when number one sends then number two and number three stops when number two sends then number one and number three stops when number two send then number three and number one stops and when number three sends then number two and number one stop so this is very short time management and within the short time management it divides in such way so that all the 
AIS stations can exchange information within each other. So as we are talking about three ships only, the whole time allocated for them three equivalent or similar sections. So now let's say there are some other ships coming with AIS equipment. They all have AIS. Now how many ships? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and your one is eight. So what will happen? This eight sections will organized by the software itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say this one eight. Okay. This is also exactly similar, equivalent. All will be equivalent time. So what is basically happening here? The time remains the same. That is exactly similar in size. I mean the duration is exactly same but they are dividing automatically within themselves so the system senses that there are some other AIS and it gives the space for it so this is how within the short time within very short time it actually happening this is how all the stations I mean the AIS stations can exchange information within each other with the automatic function of AIS itself and we can see information from each other that's how it is actually working and this is known as SOTDMA that is self-organizing time division multiple access okay let's talk about dependency AIS is giving so much of valuable data all these informations are helping in our navigation but unfortunately the answer is not satisfactory for us or not friendly for us Basically, for the safety of navigation, we can take assistance from AIS, but we cannot depend on AIS for collision avoidance. Otherwise, we can say we cannot depend on AIS. Now, let me explain why we cannot depend on AIS for collision avoidance. If you observe closely, you will not find a single word AIS in the whole call rack. Let's say this is your ship okay and there is another ship here which is very very big let's say for instance this is 400 meter and you know your one is 80 meter now your vessel's AIS is here antenna is here and that vessel's AIS antenna is here. Now the CPA TCPA that will calculate by AIS is based upon the distance between the antenna to antenna. That means this is the present CPA. Th that is the present distance. But honestly speaking, the distance between two ships are not this one that is this one the closest distance if we say let's say this vessel is at anchor and it means it will stay like this exactly here and your vessel will pass ahead of this vessel okay after a few minutes it will go like this now when your vessel is here Though it is very very close, the distance it will calculate is antenna to antenna distance which is this one and it is if it is up to here from here to here about 400 that means this one is more than that let's say 450 meter it is showing but basically you are very very close to this ship maybe around only 50 meter. Of course, it is not recommended that you will consider the distance which is showing on the AIS is correct for you. Basically, we cannot depend on AIS for some other reasons as well. Like the AIS is getting data from GPS. I mean, the GPS is interfaced with AIS to provide the auto calculation of AIS, like the CPA, TCPA. And these are based on the course of our ground and speed of our ground. 
now let us check with the AI's practical data here. You can see from our ship we are observing another vessel's data. And here bearing range, course over ground, speed over ground, heading, all these informations uh, are seen very clearly. And here you will not be able to see course over water or course through the water and speed through the water. This is not uh, possible through the AIS. But in the case of radar, it is now checking in the radar. Here is north up and sea stabilized condition. And it is very clearly seen that under the sea stabilized condition, we can see course through the water and speed through the water. Course through the water also we can see uh, slightly different from the course over ground. And CPA also according to this calculation. If you remember, as per cold rag, all the situations that has to be assessed is based upon the speed through water and course through the water. What I mean, the assessment of the situation has to be on sea stabilized or course through water and speed through water. The gyro is also interfaced with AIS. That's how gyro compass is giving the heading data to AIS. Or other way can be said that AIS is getting heading data from gyro compass. In any ways, uh, we understand that uh, we should not use AIS for collision avoidance action. Now let's talk about the coverage of AIS. Range is based upon the frequency and the frequency which is used by AIS is VHF frequency and it works up to let's say 30 to 50 nautical mile this is ideal so you can see as data of other ships let's say maximum 50 to 55 nautical mile away now let's talk about something else which is the advantage of AIS. the first and foremost advantage i should say about the AIS is if your vessel is navigating uh, in a channel kind of uh, high hill is there okay your vessel is this one and this is the and you you are heading to a port somewhere here this way and from here there is another vessel is coming and there is a high hill this is a high hill and you cannot see this vessel's data on the radar or the radar display it is not coming because of the pulse that is generated from radar is getting stuck here and cannot pick these vessels okay due to the height of the hill but in the case of AIS you can see her data from here and she can see your data from here though it is obscured from each other because the AIS works on the high frequency that is not affected by the hill i mean the any obstruction like this but in the case of radar data it can be obstructed because of the obstruction like high hill so that is the very good advantage of ais there are few more advantages uh, over the radar as well but we are not going deep into it this is the simple one i plan to share with you and for details we will go through the other videos where i will explain the advantage of ais let us discuss about some secrets though coolrag does not allow the ais to work as a collision avoidance tools but practically this will help you a lot and moreover when we use the ecdis we can see the uh, ecdis can show the ais data we don't need to go to the exact AIS equipment to check all the data. Even in the radar as well, you will find if it is interfaced in your vessel, you will find AIS data on the radar as well. All these are actually helping you to take the best decision. And now let's talk about the display of AIS. AIS have two types of display. One is graphical display and other one is tabular display. Now tabular display sounds like something like table, right? So this is based upon the table view like the number one is this vessel number two is that vessel likewise all the around vessels list will be there and the graphical display is having a overview type 
overview type display, kind of the rarer display, as the AIS equipment is not as big as the uh, radar or ACTIS. So you will see it in a small portion of the AIS display. As I said just minutes ago that we don't actually go to particular AIS equipment to check the vessel's data. It can be seen from any equipment that has the interface with the AIS. The most common two equipments that you may have uh, interface is ACTIS and Radar. One more thing I should add that using AIS you can send messages and you can receive messages as well. Nowadays various safety messages we received from VTS side through the AIS. That's the use. So I hope maximum what you need to know I have already covered. Still if you have any question ask it in the comments below and anyone can answer it of course and anyone can add some more informations so that it can be helpful for others. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to meet you in next video. And don't forget to subscribe my channel as well as please don't forget to visit the website that is only for you www.sailor360.net Once again, thank you.